wassail, beautiful people. So continuing this series about how Pluto will be energetically amplifying or questioning the different zodiac signs and what you have in those particular signs in your natal chart, we're moving on to Pluto and its relationship being square to Taurus and square to Scorpio in the next 20 year period. So it's opening the ability to action things that are troubling you within those signs for a transformation. So we're going to begin again with Pluto and understand the energy of Pluto. Pluto is the spine. Pluto takes 248 years to orbit the sun. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to experience Pluto in many lifetimes because it hasn't been there for 248 years. But being in Aquarius, it's a very different collective empowering energy. It's going to be asking you <clears throat> to look at where you're troweling the wrong crustal debris. So there's something here about skimming the surface, just kind of kicking across the soil and not really digging in to look at what dormant ice volcanoes are beckoning below the surface. Frozen emotions that you're not even aware that you're dealing with. These are an energy where there's a strong sense of how quite often when we meet somebody who presents characteristics that we find difficult to deal with, we need to start looking and asking what hidden part of us, what dormant ice volcano that we don't look at, are they portraying? We're projecting that energy onto another so that we can witness it in ourselves if we're brave enough. So bismuth, which is related to Pluto, Bismuth has been used as a drawing tool um, in centuries old art and it's a kind of unknown metamorphosis energy but it's also this energy where as you learn to appreciate energy frequencies around the area that you're seeking to illuminate and transform it's giving you the chance to draw a new story, a new artwork to move you forwards in this next 20 year period. So you're identifying stuck shadows. Pluto won't stop doing that until we face the stuck shadows. It will keep presenting more and more barriers and hurdles and rocks to stumble across. So the polarities that we're working on or I am returned, or I am buried. It's almost like there's an aspect of you that lives in the human world, but there's so much more of you buried beneath the surface that you're just not digging out here. So do you suffer from being terrified? Are you concealed in fear? Are you paralysed by darkness? Are you entombed in a spiritual sarcophagus? There's something in those energies where if you feel you're not these energies, maybe you just haven't dug deep enough to appreciate that they are resonating within your auric field. And it's time to dig them up and return more of you to the physical world so that you can experience new frequencies. Do you want to become more bounteous? Do you want winter to always be summer? Do you want to feel nestled calmly in your frame? 
your balanced body brimming with mir- minerals. I knew you said miracles, but maybe that's the case. Maybe when we're more in a balanced frequency, miracles will appear around us. This is the unearthed cellular balance allowing spiritual wealth. And spiritual wealth is to walk in a world of miracles. It really is. I experienced it briefly in Ecuador. And I have to be honest, uh, when it happened at first, it made me giggle and smile because the synchronicities, the magic, the instantaneous materialization of thoughts around me was extreme and also funny. But then it became frightening because it was rocking the world I knew so drastically that I was frightened by the magic. And that may be something we need to look at. So let's look at the energy of square. So Pluto is squaring, as I said, Taurus and Scorpio. So get your birth charts. Have a look and see what's going on in Taurus and Scorpio in your natal chart. Have a look and see which house it relates to. Because that will help you to understand what you're dealing with here. So a square is a 90 degree aspect. So Pluto is in Aquarius and it's squaring Taurus. So it's 90 degrees away from Taurus and it's... Scorpio is 90 degrees away from Pluto, so we call that a squaring energy. So obviously in a square there are four sides. So although Taurus and Scorpio are 90 degrees away, the other part of the square would be 180 degrees away, which is an opposition, and we will cover that, which is Leo, in a separate reading. So square, actionable contention. The traditional square dance, squaring off almost, you know, walking, doing the most mundane dance, something very simplistic. Do you want to move past this energy and bring in something much more rhythmically fresh? <clears throat> so obviously it's a four four rhythm one two three four one two three four but within that simplicity you're able to kind of raise a frequency of curiosity and observation to go deeper inside so this is superior versus inferior and that's a really important energy because The superior energy here would be Pluto and its effect on the music of the spheres and the planetary bodies as they move around our solar system for the next 20 years, creating all kinds of different opportunities. And the inferior would be us, the spirit beings currently inhabiting a human life. So we also have hot-headedness. Look, also usable friction, discomfort, that bothersome feeling, and a fracas. All those energies are things that feel very difficult. And we can look at this card, but if you look deeper into the card, the lines are kind of the poles are being lined up for transformation. There is order to be created from within this chaos, but also that energy of being hot-headed is a really important energy that helps us to grow. You know, from frustration, that can be the catalyst to achieving a new sensation of calm. So we have the polarities on the back of the card of I am cheerful or I am irritable. Well, to be cheerful, you've got to know what it is to be irritable. So this squaring energy of Pluto is kind of troublemaking. It's primed to explode. It's nudging you. It's poking you. This is a part of Pluto that is uncomfortable in the energetic frequencies that it's pushing out towards planets and houses 
nestled in your natal Taurus and your natal Scorpio. This is to be trapped in the zombie ballet. So the zombie ballet is the stagnant labyrinth. It's life that we are moulded into, that we have been taught to adhere to. And to step out of that 4-4 zombie ballet into something new takes an, an enormous amount of bravery. You will be thrown in the next 20-year period into unnecessary discordancy. But it isn't unnecessary. That's the point. It's our ability to recognise the necessity of this discordancy to resolve that discordancy, to bring ourselves back into harmony. But that energy is really only existing in your natal Taurus and Scorpio because the energy of Pluto is shining that squaring energy on those two zodiac signs for the next 20 years. And then battling the universe for delusional victories. So it's going to highlight an energy of where we are fogged and deluded so that we may seek resolution for those frequencies. So in gaining that resolution, and look, if you have something in zero degrees of Taurus or Scorpio, the game is on now. You have to work now. If the planets or the asteroids that you're working with in Taurus or Scorpio are at later degrees, you kind of calculate a year and eight months roughly to tell you when to prepare for a conjunction, an exact moment when Pluto will really amplify those frequencies. So pressing, untangle, untangling threads. So really working, pressing, pushing into energies that feel discordant to untangle the threads. Think of a marionette or a string puppet. It's almost like, do you want to continue to allow the zombie ballet to direct your flow through the world? Or do you want to untangle the sting strings and take control of your own world? Interesting when I said stings, because they are like stings. These moments when we feel we're out of control. This is the energy of gaining control. That's what this squaring energy is allowing. So tension stimulates action. So we need to appreciate that those moments of tension are offering us opportunities for growth. The chance to solve issues that were hidden beneath that crustal debris where we weren't willing to look. And it's the diplomatic transformations that create peace. It's offering us so many opportunities to grow, to transform and to change the world around us. So they're really powerful houses to observe in this next 20 year period. Pluto squaring Taurus. As I look at the cards, I'm drawn immediately to the notion of Taurus being fixed earth and troweling the wrong crustal debris. This ability to really dig in beneath the surface to find the treasures hidden in our core to a mass density on that frequency. So let's look at Taurus. Taurus, as I said, is fixed earth. It's also in the alchemical magnum opus process is congelation, which is to chill something down, to freeze it. Um, so with freezing, congelato. So we're chilling something down. But what's fascinating musically is you have a full symphony orchestra. This is energy on a grand scale, almost being condensed. So there's something that's coming through here about the notion of a vast romantic orchestra being broken down into a kind of second Viennese school of 
just reducing, reducing, reducing the, oh, the notes that are played by many instruments, the chords that are played by different sections, and bringing them down to their simplest form so that they can congeal into a simplistic sound, but you've still got the entire symphony orchestra participating in that composition that you've created, the new version of you that you're working with. See, it says musical romanticism and crystallising growth, but crystallising growth doesn't necessarily mean amassing more things. Amassing density, yes, through simplification and clarification. So working out what is superfluous in your frequency to the new version of you that you're creating in this next 20 year cycle. Yeah, it's a big long cycle, but it's such an opportunistic moment of huge change. So we also have the notion of practical applications. You only need to carry in your frequency that which practically applies to the life you want to live. You haven't room for all the baggage, all the barnacles that you've grown around you that are cluttering and, and stuck within your auric field. This is a time to start to clear out. I mean, you know, I often talk about cleaning up the astral, but this is really cleaning up how the astral links itself to your physical frame. So when you carry too much baggage in your physical frame, it creates crystallised blockages on dimensional realities that you can access. So by cleaning out, you begin to transform this. And because Pluto is the spine, all energies have to wire into the spine. That's part of this. So it's almost like you've got to pick the barnacles off so that you can soothe your nerves and calm yourself into a very congealed, slowed down and calm physical existence. So we have I am light or I am weighted. You see, and I love that about this card. It was really interesting channeling these. Taurus is to amass density and yet it's to be lighter and less weighted. To be lighter because you're not carrying the baggage that you were carrying before. So energies that you need to unburden yourself from are laziness, self-indulgence, gormandizing gluttony, rigidity to the point of bullying. So this notion of beginning to feel a new flow, look, it is very hard. In fixed earth, it is very difficult to feel flow because the earth is fixed. But this is... Pluto in Aquarius, this is fixed air. That air can go in and transform the frequency of the soil in which aspects of you are buried. So if you are achieving, you will begin to feel more loving. You will begin to feel like you resonate with kindness itself. And you will have that ability, rather than feeling lazy and put off through fears, that you can plough on to the end. You know, yes, it's a 20-year cycle, but you can begin your transformation throughout that. You could achieve your cycle in a very short period of time and then resonate at that cycle. You just need to look at what you have natally in Taurus and what that house represents in terms of what you're dealing with to transform. So this is to have a noble and majestic presence. Think of the bull. It's a, a truly magnificent creature. And you will become the shaper of soothing, sensual surroundings. And I don't just mean you build yourself a nice home, put beautiful furniture in, paint it well, and everyone enjoys coming round to dine with you. This is about how you soothe the surroundings of the entire world as you fix you. As each of us fixes ourselves, the entire world heals because there are more of us seeing the world 
with the eyes of healing. It's a really important frequency. And obviously fixed earth. So we're going to look at the card of earth. Pragmatic physical truths. So it's interesting, I'm being pulled immediately into the notion of cardinal earth, which is Capricorn, and that's where Pluto's been. It's almost like many of the physical truths of the last 20 years are now being highlighted and shown to not be full truths. And so there's something epiphanal about how you approach this squaring frequency in Taurus and what you have there. Basking in applause. You know, taking a bow for moving through, bringing new frequencies, amassing a new density in the physical world. Cellular grounding. So doing work with Pluto to ground yourself in a new physical existence world resonance and again that's that energy i just spoke about heal you heal the world and the more of us that do it the more healed the world can become this is a healed physique this is about offering you a chance to transform discomfort in the physical body but it's also the energy of being open to magic. You have to be open to magic. You have to think outside the physical world that you've been attuned to throughout your life. And this is stability. Obviously, it's Virgo, Capricorn and Taurus. And that's why we're there, because of Taurus. Fixed Earth. The hardest of all the cellular reprogramming to do is in Taurus. But we can achieve anything if we remain open to the magic. So I am substantial or I am meaningless. So you're really looking at how much do you feel part of your world and how much do you feel absent from your world. So this is the energy of north and north is very much destiny. So our destinies are something we have to dig deep for to uncover and discover. This is death in winter, a very transformative energy. Then we look at the substantial side. I am embodied. Are, is your consciousness truly embodied in your heart's truths, in your emotional truths, in the real world. It's also Archangel Uriel who will help you with this frequency. Earth is obviously the tarot suit of pentacles. Earth composes all the cells of our body. So the human incarnation form, the physical cells that our consciousness binds onto, that you're working with at the moment, all of those cells belong to the earth. They're made from the earth's minerals and elements. So then we look at Venus. Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And Venus is copious loving the higher heart consciousness. How do we fix our higher self consciousness, our spirit self, our divine self? How do we fix that and a mass density on that in the world in which we live? Venus orbits the sun every seven months. So if you think about that, the opportunities when Venus will be in Taurus they're coming kind of every year for 20 years. There's going to be lots of opportunities to tune into this frequency. This is heart strengthening. The perfect cadence, bringing something to a conclusion and knowing that you can do it. Venus has that energy to help us achieve something. This is soul consciousness. The soul locking into the world. For me, the soul is something 
that we build in our physical form. We have a spirit, but our soul is part of something that we're scripting in our physical life on earth. And when that life is over, that soul energy disperses along with our consciousness, but into two different places. So it's ruled by copper, which is the giver of goodness. So I am compassionate or I am uncaring. So the energies here that you're working to transform are the energies of like having infections. This antimicrobial aspect of Venus, when Venus is out of line, is out of whack with our consciousness, of the truth of our consciousness then we open ourselves to a series of infections because we're not resonating at the frequency that our divine self requires. It can lead to breathing troubles. A greedy neediness can set in. Toxic relationships appear wise. So think about those things and look at the last 20 years and see where they might have come up in your life and think, now that I can observe that, how can I change that? Because we can change anything. So it's about desires in the highest form. Now, desires are different to just pure loving. This is, Venus is love with desires. Love with desires is a very earthbound frequency and one that we have to learn to adjust to and be receptive to the fact that we have loving desires. And it's the chalice of loving. It's the energy of the Ace of Cups, the crucible of creation, but the loving crucible that we have access to. And it offers us the ability to tune into prosperity and victory in all things but we have to have some kind of honesty within our heart for the energy of things we desire the sea womb absorbing fire and fury it's the ability to calm all of those squared hot-headed contentious energies that this square is allowing venus is the aspect Think of, although Pluto is obviously squaring Taurus, it's ruled by Venus and Venus offers this opportunity to you. And copper assists iron in creating red blood cells. So it's almost like it can provide you with additional fluid cells within your bloodstream to bring a softening to the angers that we have, the frustrations we have with life. Pluto square Scorpio. It's immediately a very interesting energy because Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto. And we have Pluto obviously squaring a realm of rulership. So it's talking about deep X-ray diving. This is fixed water. These are emotions we find very difficult to stir up and transform. So really, it's a powerfully intense energy. And as we go through these cards, you'll see just how massive an emotional frequency is being offered by this opportunity to investigate this. They're both fixed energies here. But also, remember, it's fixed air for Pluto and Aquarius. So these are very fixed energies, but they're all changeable. That's the point of alchemy and astrology, is the ability to not say, I can't do this because I'm fixed by my natal chart. Your natal chart is just the beginning of your journey. How do you transform it? So let's look at Scorpio. Deep X-ray diving. The subwoofer speaker 
that throbbing, low vibrational energy that in many ways is holding an emotional, physical reality to your cellular body. But at the same time, the tuning of that subwoofer can be transformed to bring a new base frequency to hold your molecules in a new transformed emotional cellular state. So from subliminal masks to supraliminal truths. So there are masks we wear that we don't know we wear. There are aspects that colour our presence in the world that we're not fully aware of because they've been attuned to us and programmed to us for decades. And particularly in the last 20 years, we will have been attuned to Pluto in Capricorn frequencies. And so now that we're moving into Aquarius, we're being given the option to redefine our emotional makeup. It's very, very important energy. The supraliminal truths are aspects of our divinity that just couldn't be seen in the last 20 years. This is a massive transformation. We are being given the chance to redeem core essentials. Again, I'm going to go back to this idea that there's another version, parts of ourselves buried beneath the crustal debris of Pluto. So Pluto being an Aquarius is giving you the plough, the sword, to aerate, to dig up, to transform, to breathe life into aspects of ourselves that we've just previously not been able to understand at all. Shadow seductions. So Pluto is stuck shadows. Scorpio is shadow seductions. You've got to love shadow work. You've got to love looking for the aspects of yourself that frighten you the most because it's within those that the seeds of transformation are waiting. But they won't grow in compact earth. They'll only grow in aerated earth that we water with this energy of Scorpio. This is also separation in the alchemical magnum opus. What is separation? It's taking things and separating them all out so that you can choose which ones belong in the next part of your magnum opus process of alchemy of life. So it's undoing solutions, not things that you've worked out necessarily, but that notion of subliminal masks. They're solutions as in Salt in water is a solution. Sugar in water is a solution. And it's a process to separate them back out so that you can choose the aspects of them that are necessary for your journey forwards in the next 20 years. I am peace or I am frustrated. Have you been sensing an energy of self-destructiveness? Have you always been someone who's quite stealthily ready to sting back? You feel wounded, you kick out. Remember the energy, the symbol of a scorpion. It's a very peaceful creature, but riled, it will hurt. The gangster pimp of the underworld. Do you find too much joy in being in the shadows and that's a very interesting question to search because many Scorpios do so you need to look at what you have in Scorpio I mean for myself it's my rising sign so I have Neptune and I have Venus and I have Mercury there um, and I have some asteroids um, so I'm really looking at this energy for me as being a chance to transform <clears throat> the frequency I send out into the world around me. The fogs and delusions that I carry around me. So if we're looking at the positive side of this frequency, we're looking at the energy of being euphoric. I mean, how gorgeous would that be? 
to just have a euphoric life, to move into the energy of being an unbiased listener, to just hear people's stories, let people tell their truths, make no judgments. The integrated shadow walker. Instead of being the gangster pimp of the underworld, wouldn't it be better to be an integrated shadow walker? Someone that knows that they have walked to their shadows and come out the other side, euphoric. And then infectious mesmeric optimism. Don't allow the frequencies you have in Scorpio to kind of make you that frustrated, pessimistic energy. Allow it to be a mesmeric optimism, a joyous feeling, again, that euphoria. And to become the guardian champion of dark esoteric realms. To be fearless. To know that whatever shadows descend, you, in your very soul, can illuminate all shadows and find the seeds of growth and transformation, the nutrients in all the shadows. Then we have water. Water is a very powerful element. I'm being pulled into this notion back to Pluto of the dormant ice volcanoes, the emotions hidden beneath the surface. Because water in this musical alchemy of astrology deck is the emotional sluice gates. As those volcanoes begin to melt, the emotions will erupt from beneath the surface. But because it has the Bulgarian folk choir, there's something deeply emotional, but also incredibly cleansing and clarifying about basking in these frozen emotions. Now, some of them will be brand new because they've been dormant for so long you've never experienced these emotions. This is an empathic deluge. I absolutely love those two words together. So there's some kind of release of the energy of others. The empathic frequency where you tune into another and become overwhelmed by another's frequencies. So going back to the idea of an unbiased listener, this is the energy of the shadow work, the emotional shadow work that you have to go through to get to that state where you no longer absorb the stories of others, you just register them, but know they're their energies, not yours. So almost learning not to project your own hidden shadows because you've been there, you've walked that walk, but now to be able to be the hearer of the traumas of others so that they can release them. There's a river like, fluidity, a psychic fluidity, a consciousness fluidity coming through this, soulful sagacity, knowing your soul is in harmony with your emotions. And a secret keeper. There's a thing, hearing secrets, holding secrets, they're not yours to give to another. Each person has their own secrets and they can share their secrets to explore themselves, but you don't need to share them with another. So I am flowing or I am needy, needy. That's a really fascinating energy. So this refers to the compass frequency east. East is obviously where the sun rises. So this is the energy of conception in spring, things being brand new. And in the flowing frequency, you have feeling. Can you be a really feeling person? Can you understand the emotions of others? Can you express comfort to others? This is Archangel Gabriel 
Water is obviously the tarot suit of cups. Water is the fluid allowing blood flow. Water is also divine consciousness. Water is the Akashic Records. It remembers everything that has ever taken place in the earth realm. And you can also look at undines, nymphs and merfolk all being water elementals. So let's look at Mars, the other ruler. And I found it interesting when pulling out the cards to look at these energies. Pluto is squaring Scorpio, which is fixed water, ruled by Mars and Pluto. So there's something here about having both rulers and where Mars is in your chart and how Mars moves, obviously every 23 months, how it shifts and offers opportunities. So it's gonna go into conjunction with Pluto. They're gonna meet up, discuss things, transform, give you more opportunities many times in the next 20 years. So Mars is the war with one. W-O-N-E. So the war with ourselves, the inner martial drumming, the inner rhythms that drive us forwards, the inner energies of fury that can allow us this actionable contention. This is a really powerful frequency to have when you're squaring something. It's all ourselves. So this is about grounding our emotions. It's a really powerful energy, self-survival. It has the frequency of being strong boned. Strong bone really refers to being in ideal health. The bones are said to be so alive that they are part of the signature that makes us healthy. An energy as a passion, a desire for living, driven ambition, living, sorry, driven ambition. An iron is human fortitude. These are really strong living physical energies that Mars is offering us. I am powerful. I am weak. So look at the place in your life where you feel anger because that's going to be a great starting point. Look at the place in your life where you desire to hurt yourself and others. You need to fix that energy. This can also bring about a stress to the immune system. When we're not in harmony with our Mars, when we haven't tried to win the war with ourselves, then we're putting stress on the immune system. We can feel a destructive rage through rash impatience. So there's a temperance energy that needs to come here to be the side of Mars where Mars becomes the harvest, the worker for the harvest. He becomes the tool for gathering and nurturing. So there's also this idea of a loss of ideas, love, passion and power every time Mars goes retrograde. So the retrograde periods of Mars here are going to give you an even larger opportunity to look at the frequencies of Pluto squaring Scorpio. So powerful is actioning. What is actioning? It's bringing something into your reality. Not just an idea, not just a consciousness notion, but actioning it to come into the world. Feeling stable and secure. See, I want to say feeling like nothing can trigger you any longer. So constructive, adventurous energies. There's a thrill frequency to Mars here. When we work fully with Mars in the right frequency, that's what we're achieving. The harvest after all the shadow work, Mars will help you to identify with Pluto, the two together, identifying all the stuck shadows and finding the harvest that comes after those actions. An iron creates haemoglobin to supply oxygen. So this is the energy 
that will help the frequency of Aquarius, that fixed air, to reach every part mm, of our spiritual consciousness, to transform. They're really, they're like a team. They're coming across very much. They're both in black, Mars and Pluto. This is great teamwork. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at the numbers then. There was something I noticed earlier um, in terms of Scorpio, Water and Mars. There is this frequency of 818. So there being a kind of mirror of transformation available. There's also 99, which is 90, which is a 9. The Water card, which is Divine Consciousness, just really highlighting allow the fluid empathic deluge of that energy to come through mars is 18 which is also a nine so there is this real energy of the ability to transform the fire through emotions through water to put out the flames to put out the anger this energy of divine fury sacred rage is a divine frequency that will allow us to action remember square is actionable contention mars is actioning you need these frequencies square is also 59 which is a 14 and that for me is very higher dimensional divinity that has a known purpose that may be unknown to us it may even be unknown to our spirit self but it's known to our divine self but it may not have the space to resonate yet in our human consciousness because it's so much smaller. So that's what you're dealing with for the next 20 years in terms of Pluto squaring Taurus and squaring Scorpio. We'll see you.